Welcome back to the video. So let's talk about workhorse stock. Everyone seems to be really sleeping on this overall company. If you look at the three month chart, it's extremely stable. And I'm really considering wheeling this stock, like selling cash secure puts and then selling cover calls and then selling cash secure puts on this company. Now I did it a few times, made some money here and there, but of course this week I made a pretty deep mistake. I sold it when it was going down around this area and I didn't know it would go up this much throughout the day plus 11%. So it's a pretty big bummer for me. I would have made like an extra thousand dollars, but I didn't, but oh well. Learn my lesson. I feel like wheeling workhorse could be a really good strategy, but let's talk about workhorse stock and why this is such a good company and should be in your portfolio. If you check out the one week chart, you may be wondering where is this giant tech bubble at? Because if you look at QQQ's one week chart, you clearly see it was doing really well and then bam, the bubble popped. It went from like a high of $303 to a low of like $275, literally a negative nine to negative 10% decrease on the whole entire tech sector. And Tesla got it even worse with the after hours looking extremely red. And overall, check out the one week chart. It's pretty bad. It went from like $500 right now to less than $400 a 20% correction for Tesla, whereas Workhorse, this EV company, is actually hitting all-time highs, literally going from like $17 in a single day to $19, almost 20 bucks. Check out the one-year chart. It went from a penny stock to a company that stabilized at around $15 to $20. So what's going on? Why is this company so special? So Workhorse pretty much makes the last mile logistics vehicles. I get it. You know, Tesla is pretty awesome. Nikola Motors is pretty awesome. Hylion is cool. They make these giant trucks. But keep in mind, trucks, these big semi trucks, are only one phase of the lengthy logistics system. Trucks will pretty much dock in these giant trucking facilities. Packages will be unloaded in that certain city. And then the packages will be loaded onto these smaller trucks, which are the trucks that actually go to your neighborhood and drop off your Amazon package or the package you got from Etsy. And so far, these trucks are doing extremely well. Keep in mind, Workhorse, it's really powerful because they have two different vehicles and they're absolutely amazing. On top of that, these vehicles are out. They already got the safety certification from the US government. Along with that, they also have a factory that's cranking out 300 to 400 of these vans on a yearly basis. The CEO wants to scale it up because of the amount of orders they're getting. And I feel like they will be receiving some of the craziest orders because they have no competition. If you look at any other van company, none of them are making EV vans. And the people that are making electric vans like Rivian, they don't have a factory to start cranking these out. Workhorse is already cranking these out and they have two different models, a bigger model and also a smaller model. And if you check out Workhorse by Oppenheimer, you can clearly see it's recommended by this giant firm. And so far, if you check out more about them, Open Hemier also says that Workhorse has this huge edge among EV delivery trucks and their trucks, Workhorse trucks, are really high quality. And if you charge it, it could go 100 miles per single charge, which is enough for these trucks to go to certain neighborhoods, drop off the package, and then go back. And the thing is, a lot of major companies are betting that Workhorse gets some sort of a huge contract. On top of that, Workhorse also has the Horsefly, which is their drone delivery system. Drone delivery has been pretty big lately, and more and more people are going for this. And with Amazon getting FFA approval to do drone delivery in very rural areas and packages of with less than 5%, you clearly see drone delivery is going to a whole new route. Now, Workhorse obviously makes some of the finest electric trucks, but with them going for these drones, it becomes even more apparent that they're really serious about the logistics world. Keep in mind, the reason why this stock didn't absolutely plummet to the dirt like Tesla and also the rest of the tech sector, even though this is an EV company, is because one, they have a factory, but on top of that, they have virtually no competition. Every time when Workhorse, if you do some technical analysis, every time when it dips to a certain point, it automatically gets gobbled up. After it gets gobbled up, the stock does drop, but it will surge once again when there's renewed interest. And this time the renewed interest is pretty much a major buy from one of the biggest guys out there, Oppenheimer. They pretty much said that this is one of the best companies out there and you can't really sleep on the overall stock, which since the overall stock going up, whereas the rest of the tech sector absolutely went to the dirt. This is one of the few well-performed stocks this few days. And I really wish I could go back to Workhorse instead of going back to T Triple Q, which really bit me extremely hard. 
And on top of that, a lot of people are betting that Workhorse gets some sort of extremely big contract because UPS, FedEx, USPS are trying to find EV trucks because obviously these gasoline diesel trucks are not going to be the future. On top of that, drivers don't really need any sort of new training for these trucks. And with very low maintenance costs since it's purely electric instead of being combustion, and you don't have to use diesel or oil to pretty much fuel it up. You would just simply charge it up. It's super safe. And all the trucks revolve around the mobile app. So you could clearly track where the trucks are and make sure your logistics team is doing a good job. And so far, I got to admit, this is the future of delivery. They're already getting some orders from smaller logistics services out there. And also the company Rider, if you guys want to rent one of these trucks to move your stuff away from your home, you could also do that as well. So they're really expanding the business as much as possible. They also got Hitachi, which is a Japanese company, to work with them with an exclusive deal, meaning if there's any sort of a major contract or something really big, Hitachi will keep track of the supply chain for workhorse and Hitachi will also help consumers do the financing option for the truck. So they're acting like a middleman for financing. What does this mean? Why did workhorse hire Hitachi for this? Well, everyone expecting workhorse once again to receive an extremely big order and possibly from the US Postal Service with a lot of big hedge funds and big money saying workhorse could be the guy to get the $6.3 billion contract for new mail trucks and it's this year. Once again, the trucks must be built in the USA, and for Workhorse, their trucks are built in the USA, and they have a factory already cranking out vehicles. If you look around, there is a lot of gasoline-powered vans. There's a lot of them, but there's not a lot of EV vans out there. And the only company actually making and cranking out EV vans with two different models is going to be Workhorse. And the small Workhorse C60 vehicle, which is this one, will be a perfect mail truck. And this is also built in the USA. So this is a really big deal. I can't wait to see what's going on and what's going to be ongoing further. On top of that, you do have ARK Invest literally increasing the amount of shares. I'm pretty much the last time I saw it, ARK Invest only had 500,000 shares. Now they have 600,000 shares. And this is part of the technology and also robotics, the autonomous vehicle stock. So far, it's doing extremely well. I feel like if Kathy Wood actually looks forward to this company, it will definitely go really well. ARK Invest is by far one of the best performing ETFs and also hedge funds on all of Wall Street. And with ARK Invest buying so much of Workhorse instead of NEO and other EV companies out there, it says something. It's probably a really special company. On top of that, Workhorse is pretty good, especially how it's decently flat. Even with this crazy drop, Workhorse actually maintains its price tag because the market cap is extremely tiny at only $2 billion, whereas Tesla's market cap, even though they do make way more vehicles, but it's worth almost $400 billion. And Nikola Motors is also worth a lot of money as well, which is also pretty freaky at $13 billion. Workhorse, extremely tiny. Nikola Motors, they don't even have a factory, but their market cap is $13 billion. Workhorse has a factory. They have $2 billion market cap, and they also own 10% of DPHC, Diamond Peak Holdings, which is Lordstown Motors. Now, keep in mind that if Lordstown Motors goes up a lot, Workhorse will also go up as well, since 10% of Lordstown Motors is owned by Workhorse. So they also have a stake in regular consumer cars. And Workhorse also has a factory. They're trying to crank out these fully electric trucks for everyday consumers. So this is pretty big. That's about it. Thanks for watching and comment below.